Hello and welcome to the Village Voice. I am your host, Realtor Kathy Smith, and apparently my little fuzzy friend over there, Indy, is saying hello as well. So hopefully you're doing great on this rainy Wednesday evening. Now, during the pandemic, I have noticed that quite a few of you have picked up, I don't know, some woodworking skills, or you'd like to. I don't know, how do I know this? Because everyone seems to be at the home improvement stores these days, <laughs> lining up. Now, the question is, is what would you do with all that extra lumber that you happen to have? Is there an artist inside of you? Is there a, a handyman potentially there? Well, I thought I'd do a little something different here on the Village Voice and uh, bring in a expert when it comes to all sorts of things lumber. Um, I guess that's the best way to put it. Uh, Jeff Hornung with the uh, Walnut Log. I'll bring you in here, Jeff. Hang on a second. Let me make sure I got you live. Um, bear with me a second. Technology's having some fun today. Um, there he is. There's Jeff. Glad to see you, my friend. Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? <laughs> Audio okay? I'm doing pretty good. Good, good. Now, Audio sounds fabulous. Now, Good. apparently you've been working real hard in the studio this afternoon because you also do some live streams um, of woodworking fun, right? I do. I do. Uh, every Wednesday, I do uh, Facebook Live. Um, back up half a step. Uh, in, in the real world, I am a full-time wood turner, so I, I, I make bowls and, and things okay out of not out of lumber but out of out of tree parts uh so i'm actually taking logs and and things mm -hmm. branches and things of that nature and i'm putting them on a machine i'm using hand tools and i'm creating uh functional pieces but i also create decorative pieces that's maple um i create art pieces and uh illusions of other materials so that's uh wow you know, uh, uh, that, that solid piece of wood piece of maple and i used uh, some carving techniques and some painting techniques to make that actually look like a piece of uh, ancient bronze um but when when i'm wow. not actually working on my own pieces i teach at an art school here in st louis and uh, unfortunately due to the covid distancing issues the art school is still closed um Wednesday would be my normal class night and I would go downtown and, and teach people how to do what I love doing. Uh, since I can't do that, I decided, you know what, I've got the cameras and I do live demonstrations anyway. I'm going to do this uh, every Wednesday at class time. And um, that's what I've been doing. So <laughs> I apologize. I'm a little bit dirty. Um, you spot there, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right there. Yeah. You got it. Got it. But, you know, so so I guess I guess the best way to start with this, Jeff, is to kind of introduce folks to you, because obviously, you know, people are doing some wild and crazy things, clearing out their lots, you know, doing some home improvement projects that they've been holding off on in a long time. You know, now they've got the time to do some things. So right, these right. guys might actually have all that laying around and they don't know what to do with it. But but Jeff, let's back up and talk about your history, like how you got into this whole thing which is very interesting, actually. You are, well, actually, just, just tell your story, Jeff. We'd love to hear it. Uh, the, the short version is um, I was in a car accident, and uh, it, was about, it was about nine years ago. Um, I was in a car accident, minor, minor accident. A guy, a guy hit me from the side. Um, I hit my noggin on the driver's window. Not a, not a big deal, uh, but I did have a concussion, a very minor concussion, and ended up with uh, what they call post-concussion syndrome. And, and for me, that was horrifying. It was like there was a disconnect uh, between the creative side of the brain and the logical side of the brain. Um, I was a musician, uh, like, like Kathy, you are. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a musician. Mm -hmm. I couldn't play music. Um, I couldn't listen to music with any volume, really. Uh, I was a retail florist and had been for a number of years. I could not... I could not handle the basic arrangement, you know, a dozen roses in a vase, the easiest thing that you can do. I couldn't do it without a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of trouble because of this disconnect. And, um, during my, my healing time, uh, we discovered that if I had a hobby, it's something I could focus on. I would, I would improve. I would do better because I, I would mm -hmm. be able to, uh, kind of ignore the rest of the world and focus on my, my hobby, whatever it was. And I tried a couple of things and I either didn't like them or they didn't stick. And, uh, one day my wife 
was walking through the kitchen and she had this this catalog for a place called John C. Campbell Folk School in North Carolina, Brasstown, North Carolina. And she hmm. flops it on the kitchen table and she says, look through there, pick a class because that's where we're going on vacation in a couple of weeks. Uh, so happy wife, happy life. I looked at the catalog and it said <laughs> folk school. I don't want to go to a folk school. It's where hippies come from. And I'm not a hippie, obviously. Um, so I really, I didn't want to go. I had no interest in this, but in order to make her happy and then grumble, 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 all right, blacksmithing, that'd be a lot of fun, but I don't think I'd be able to build a forge here. I don't want a basket weave. I don't want to, I don't want to make butter. Uh, no, I'm not doing any of this wood turning. All right. I, I've never done woodwork in my life, but I could probably identify a lathe and a catalog if I had to. Let's do that. And uh, we went there. I uh, wasn't feeling good. I had a lot of headache trouble um, just leading up to this trip. And, and when we were just arriving um, and we go into the first class and, and, I, and I, I didn't want to be there, but we spent a lot of money. So yeah, fine, I'll try it. And um, <laughs> went through the basics with the instructor. And then he said, OK, we're going to put a piece of wood on your machine. And we want you to take these these simple tools that we talked about. Turn on your machine and, and see what happens make a couple of cuts, see how you feel about it. And, and I don't know, I know this isn't the way it really happened, but the way I remember it is the, the, the instant the tool touched the piece of wood, my head stopped hurting. Uh, the heavens opened up, angels started singing and I decided right then and there, this was the best thing I've ever experienced in my life. I absolutely want to be a hippie. I want to do this forever. And, and it, it, it helped. And I can honestly say that wood turning allowed me to heal you know, whatever, whatever wow. this was allowed me to heal. And then uh, I simply got to a point where I was able to start sharing what I knew, you know, in a teacher position because of the people that had shared things that they knew with me. I was at a point where I could give back and, and it's just gone. It's gone full time. You know, this is, this is my career. Wow. It's what I do. And, uh, and I absolutely That's love it. I have the best job in the world. I don't know about that. I kind of love mine. So, you know, we're kind of even. You there. haven't turned <laughs> yet. So we'll get you in, in oh, my studio that's right. sometime. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I. You know what? You've thrown down the gauntlet. I will take you on with that. And there um, are turners I have done, everywhere. Well, you know, the thing is, is that you know, I, I have done my fair share of stuff around the house and I've even, you know, flipped a house. Um, so my cuts are a lot rougher than yours, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Probably not. Um, I'm not exactly known for being handy. I'm not exactly known for being precise. I can do round like nobody's wow. business, but I'm not a cabinet maker. Uh, I don't do, I don't do flat joinery. I don't do anything that requires precision. I do, I do round. I do things that don't have to be precise. Um, and because I'm also an artist, um, I go in other directions with like the, the colored work and, yeah. uh, you know, the, definitely that. not something you want to have salad out of, but it's just a piece of wood, mm -hmm. you know, I've got some stands around here that I would look lovely on, Yeah, but, um, but Jeff, you were actually, you were an arborist also as part of your yep. credentials before. So you were Mr. Tree, so to speak. So uh, you definitely know, you know, Mr. the different Tree types was, of woods and it, it helped. Uh, understanding mm -hmm. grain direction, understanding structure, um, under being able to look at a, at a log as it's laying on the ground or a tree as it's standing in the, in the wherever that needs to come down. And I can, I can view the bark and, and where the branches are and the knots and whatnot. And I can get a pretty good idea of what the figuring is going to be. Okay. Uh, well, actually, this is a, probably a better yeah example that this is just it's a functional piece so it's uh it's smooth and and nice on the inside um but it has a really interesting grain pattern and all i did was take a carving tool and carve a series of lines and and highlight that that grain pattern all right but i could look at a, i can wow. look at a piece of wood and i can have a pretty good idea what that grain is going to give me if I were to turn it into a vessel or a tabletop or, or something. And, uh, and that, that's pretty cool. So the arborist instruction helped. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be an arborist first. You certainly don't have to have a car accident. That's not required. <laughs> it's kind of work for me. <laughs> no concussions necessary. No concussions necessary. No, I, did, <laughs> I needed a smack upside the head, apparently. 
but well, you know me from I've, way I've back. I've known you for so. a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A, good, a good smack in the head would be good for you once in a while. Yeah. But, but for the but for the folks that are just like tuning in and they're saying, "Wood turning, like what? What is this?" So, in a nut, pardon me, in a nutshell, <laughs> you see where I'm going with that. I guess. Uh, yeah. Um, so, can you kind of like give someone like a a one on one, like what, like a real quick, like what is woodworking? Like what yeah, is wood turning versus woodworking? Uh, well, wood turning is woodworking. Uh, woodworking, however, is not necessarily wood turning. Um, wood turning is taking a piece of wood, any shape, size, whatever, and putting it on a machine called a lathe. Um, there's one big yellow one right behind me. Uh, I can zoom out a little bit, and you can you can see part of this machine. Uh, the purpose of the machine is simply to take a piece of wood and spin it round and round. And then I will come back as the uh, the maker, the artist, the craftsman, uh, or whatever, and I will use uh, a series of hand tools to effectively carve and shape my my pieces of wood into bowls or 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 uh, furniture pieces or or decorative items or actual conceptual works of art or things of that nature. But it's all done with hand tools. Uh, it's not a machining process. I'm actually making the cuts. The wood just happens to be spinning round and round. Um, the cool thing is you don't have to be um, precise. I'm not trying to make one piece of wood meet another piece of wood at a 90 degree angle yeah. or anything, or I'm not, I'm not usually making something that's going to be structural or support any weight. Um, I'm making stuff that's fun. And uh, there's, there's a number of things that you can do any, anywhere from a simple uh, ballpoint pen. Uh, there's there's pen kits mm. where you turn the pen bodies on a lathe and uh, you can do something as simple and as small as that to something as large as uh, porch columns that you probably see when you're out, uh, you know, showing your houses, porch columns. You know, that's yes. it takes some equipment that I don't have, but solid porch columns were originally turned out of entire lengths of tree logs turned on. They were just turned on a lathe. That's where that's where they wow. came from originally. They didn't come from a from a, a plastic casting. They cut down trees, turned them, and made these porch columns. So uh, porch columns, the the stair uh, stair rails, balusters, things of that nature. Any yeah. wooden baluster uh, that has a round shape to it was turned on a lathe. Okay. So, so, so cool. obviously they've been doing this for a very long time. I mean, um, obviously centuries. this is going back hundreds of years. Thousands. Okay, centuries even. Okay, we, we're talking. There okay. are. Um, there are images associated with the, the construction of the pyramids where we're pretty sure there's a little Egyptian guy working on uh, a manually powered lathe. And, and, you know, so lathes have been out there forever. And, and the job of the machine is simply to turn a piece of wood round and round. Wow. That's yeah. cool. So, yeah, so let's, really let's talk, you're talking about a lot about equipment and things of that sort. So you mentioned a lathe and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. if I were to think about getting into this, like what kind of equipment would I necessarily need? And, and, you know, obviously any hobby you get into, you're going to want the biggest and the baddest, uh, but biggest probably starting is, out small. <laughs> biggest is better. Uh, you can, you can make small pieces on a large machine a whole lot easier than you can make large pieces on a small machine. Um, but your, your right. workshop space and your electrical in your workshop space and, and your budget, you know, the size of the projects that you're thinking on turning, they all will go and factor into what type of equipment that you would want to go out and get. Uh, the cool thing is um, all across the country are wood turning clubs. Uh, there's a, a national organization called the American Association of Wood Turners, and there are clubs and chapters all across the country. Um, I know there's one, I know there's a couple in your area Um mm -hmm. They're they're all over the place, and and the the great thing is, ever almost every wood turner that I've ever come in contact with has been willing to share what they know. So if you're thinking about getting into it, yeah, you can do Facebook and YouTube and and check things out online. You can talk to people like me online, or you could go see if there's a club in your area and maybe go in for um go in for a meeting, yeah, go in as a guest. Mm -hmm. They normally have cookies and coffee, so you know that's that's an incentive. You know, free food. Oh, hey, anytime there's cookies, free food. Yeah. I'm there. I'm there. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you might be able to. Uh, you might be able to walk in and 
try something. Uh, there's there's schools and classes all over the country. Um, you know, like the art school where I teach. There's a I know there's a furniture there's a furniture making school. Um, it's in North Carolina, so it's close, uh, yeah. that, that teaches wood turning. There's John Campbell, there's Aramont, there's Mark Adams School of Woodworking. There's places all over the country where you can go in and take these classes that you don't have to start by buying the biggest and the best. Uh, you can, you can see if you like it, you can, right. you can go in and do some hobby stuff. There's also, uh, maker That's cool. You know, if you have a maker space in your area, they might have a wood lay that you could go in and see if this is something that you might be interested in because the, the lathe so, expense, it's probably the least right. amount of money you're going to spend, you know, and, and we're really? talking a couple of hundred too many thousand, you know, the, the price yeah. range is, is all over the place. So when you're talking about makerspace, so is this like, mm -hmm. like almost a communal, like a bunch of guys get together and this is, we use the same equipment together. Like how, what's, oh, yeah. what is that? Um, there's, there's a uh, makerspace, places it's uh, more than a club and they they usually have more than one um discipline that they will have general woodworking uh they might have a lathe mm -hmm. or two uh they'll probably have uh some metalworking equipment or smithing equipment or whatever and and this is this is a place where for uh, a, a subscription fee either by the hour or day or week or month or whatever you can go in and you can use the equipment that's owned by this, this maker space and, uh, and maybe have some instruction, maybe figure it out on your own. Uh, but you go in and, and with a little bit of training, you can start trying to see if it, something of this would work for you. There's, there's one in St. Louis, uh, actually close to where the art school is called make. And, uh, I know that there's places around the country that are, are like that, that they're simply, uh, like you said, a community, uh, area or, or space where they, mm -hmm. somebody else has provided machinery and tools and things that you can come in and use for a fee. Um, but you can, you don't have right. to invest in this stuff or tie up the space in your own place. You know, so if you live That's in an apartment, great. you don't have the ability yeah. to ha put something in your garage or something, uh, so that might be an option to see if you like it. Well, you know, and the thing is like, we here in Charlotte, we're not that far away from High Point, which is the furniture capital of the world, in my opinion. Right, right. <laughs> it, as a realtor, I'm an efficient, I'm an aficionado when it comes to furniture, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, so we do have a lot of resources actually here that most people just don't know about. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one really good resource that I happen to fly to at least once a year, usually late October, or early November is, is Kling Spore Woodworking, that they have, they have a big show. And uh, so I'm, I'm actually in your area once a year. I'm, I'm hoping it goes through. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. yeah, but uh, they have they have two or three location stores. I know they give classes, uh, so that that's definitely a resource that's actually in your area that I'm aware of. And there's more like that around the country. Um, woodworking cool. stores. There's there's Woodcraft. There's Rockler Woodworking. Um, the retail retail stores that sell supplies. A lot of them also teach classes. So uh, yeah. lots of resources available. Well, that, okay. Now I'm getting all excited because that we can actually do something, but, but so, okay. So now we know the equipment that we need. We know where to find the equipment, you know, to, to do this. So when we talk about the type of wood, you know, is there like, like a hard and fast rule? Obviously if I'm talking about lumber, I'm bought from Lowe's. That's not something that's going to work. I but maybe I if avoid... I chop down a wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would avoid hardware wood, um, dimensional lumber, um, I've got a, I've got a two by six. This is a, this is a white wood and um, it's, this wood is grown specifically for its structural compression strength. Um, that makes it not a great option for turning. Can you turn it? Absolutely. Is it a great option? No, it's dusty and, and splintery and chippy and not really pretty. And that's, that's the big thing. But the general rule is all wood is good wood and free wood is better. Um, Oh yeah. <laughs> Second rule, life is too short to turn fresh pine simply because it's full of, of, of sap and pitch and it's a mess. We don't, I don't like doing that personally. Um, but, uh, any, any domestic American hardwood. So your walnuts, your maples, your hickories, things of that nature, sycamore, you know, there's trees I'm looking, I've got my overhead door open and I'm looking out at the trees, oak, the whole bit. Um, <laughs> 
all of that's fine. It's almost, it's almost like you're looking at the trees and you're like, you know what? You're next. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I unfortunately, <laughs> yes, I do that. It's like that tree. I must. I was a consulting arborist. That tree needs to come down. It's a hazard. And uh, while I'm not going to take it down, I will come and take some of your pieces. I'll make sure I turn you something mm -hmm. that I want the lion's share. Um, you know, and then like you said, you, you, it's rainy where you are. It's rainy here in St. Mm -hmm. Louis. It's with storms, branches come down. Um, yep. it's free wood. It's literally laying on the ground. You just go out and, and, and pick it up. And, uh, so you can buy, you can buy exotic woods from, uh, South America and Africa and places like that. Those tend to be, um, prettier. They're going to have better color. They're going to have better grain in general. They're going to cost mm -hmm. more money. Um, you got to pay attention to allergic reactions with some of those exotics, uh, just, just because of what they are. But, um, this it, this it, this piece of maple, uh, the the coloring is actually insect damage. The ambrosia beetle got into this tree as it was uh, becoming so mature, it was in in uh, a decline state. And the beetles would come in. Um, you can actually possibly see right there. Yeah, so and hitting here, almost. Those are bug tunnels. All right, so. The adult goes in one tunnel, lays the eggs. As it's eating its way through, it's uh, leaving a trail of waste. And the, there's enzymes in the waste from that bug that actually change the density of the wood uh, so that the larva can consume it on their way out. That's that second tunnel. The advantage to guys like me is it makes really pretty coloration on wood that I can use to my advantage um, because the prettier it is, the more I can sell it for. So there's okay, that. So, and, so, so, you know, now like the dogs of the world, yeah. we'll be using that as an excuse for making our lawns terrible. They'll be like, look, if, it, if I was an insect in wood, yeah. <laughs> you'd call it beautiful. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so if I'm, if I'm thinking of, of being a, a wood, a wood turner, mm -hmm. um, what can I, what can I do with this? Like what kind of cool things can we make? Well, obviously bowls. Uh, so yeah, the one with the hole in it, maybe not the best option for ice cream. Um, but if I had a, if I had a solid piece and uh, the demo piece that I was working on in my live, just another piece of maple, um, not, not quite finished yet. I need to sand and apply a finish, but I could use this for ice cream, Cheerios, salad um, rolls, my car keys and change, uh, TV remotes, all sorts of things. But I could also do, um, I could do pepper mill, salt shakers. I can do uh, bits and pieces for furniture. So Windsor chairs with the, all of the spindle work, that's all wood turned material. I can wow. do, I can do balusters for my stairs or porch columns for one of your houses. Um, I can also do uh, conceptual pieces. I, actually, I can bring up, uh, give me just a moment. I want to bring mm -hmm. up that. All right. So that's actually, uh, that's actually an art piece. It's about, uh, it's about uh, 20 inches tall. And uh, that was something that I, I completed during an artist residency uh, at the end of last year. It's completely sculptural, conceptual, uh, but the two primary components were both turned on the lathe. So it's actually a bull form on, um, on a cone. And uh, that, it, that piece is called Road to Recovery. And it was kind of a, a physical representation of, of all of the things that were going on in my head uh, during my recovery time. And then I also wow. have a piece, uh, that one there, that is called On the Inside. And I like to use that one as, as the representation of what it actually felt like inside my head. That on the outside, it was fine. Not a lot to see. It was kind of nice. But on the inside, there was yeah. there was turmoil and and pain and 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 confusion and and all sorts of aggressive tension and things like that and uh, so i was able to i was able to turn that into um an art piece simply by starting with the basic bowl form and so i can there's the sky's the limit i can do an enormous amount of things with turn pieces i can make boxes with uh screw on lids this is just a little little wooden oh box gosh. with a lot of threads, but you know, you can put 
things. It's a box. You can put things into your box. Uh, and, and it's all you made can, out of wood. You, and it's a lot of fun. So you can you can waterproof those little boxes, right? Waterproof waterproof is that's a complicated that's a complicated term when you're dealing with wood. As long as the wood does not have right. a hole, the wood itself is waterproof. Uh, the the problem with water is going to be how it reacts to the finish that you put on the wood. So that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, the finish is on your coffee table. When you put a, a, right. your, a wet cup down and you get that white ring, it's because yeah. the finish on that table has shellac in it. Shellac reacts with water and it creates that, that white film um, because of the finish that you use. This, this particular piece of wood uh, has actually been stabilized. So it's been, it's been um, plasticized basically during, with a, a, a vacuum process uh, that, that, that uh, a resin has been absorbed by the material, which makes it um, much more durable. This one would absolutely be waterproof because of what it is, but you have to take that extra step in order to treat it like that. Uh, for something like a food vessel, I'm going to use an oil finish, which will help make mm -hmm. it more water resistant, more durable, more functional, um, and allow the wood to resist having any any food bits be absorbed by the wood itself that could uh, go that could go bad and and uh, and that's just again that's just the type of finish that I chose to use on that wow. uh, based on the the um, proposed function of that piece. That's so cool. I mean, there's so it really is you know your imagination really limits you in regards to what you can do. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Because those little tiny, those little tiny boxes and stuff like that, my mother would love little stuff like that. You know, yeah. she put and something they're, little they're, in there. Just a huge amount of fun. That's another one. Uh, just a yeah. little, little threaded box. You That's know, neat. It, and it started out. Um, it's like this, just a, a wooden block. This is cotton wood that has been stabilized. Um, we wanted the wood stabilized wow. so that the wood was durable enough for that threading process you know so i've got i've got male and female threads on there kind of hard to see no i don't have great light right there you, you um, say you're not precise but i don't believe you jeff <laughs> right, I, I also say like i'm like lazy a lot um but people say that i'm not because of the work i get done um with the thread chasing I, it's it's not necessarily precise it's technical and that's not the same mm -hmm. thing well, now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it is tech. Okay, all right, then I will change my adjective. You're very yeah. technical. Uh, How about that? When, I, when I need to be. And then sometimes um, I just do what the wood wants me to do. That, uh, And I know that sounds a little hippie, uh, a, little, a little weird, but, it, but it's kind of true <laughs> that um, I only know. Let me, let me see if I can. Big piece of wood right here. Big piece of maple. I can, uh -oh, I can look at a piece of wood, right? And I can probably get right. two bowls and a couple of boxes out of this piece of wood. Um, I only know what I can see on the outside. That's all I know. I have no idea what's going on on the inside of this piece of wood. Yeah. So I actually tell my students uh, with the design process, they need to make sure that they keep that design process fluid. People say, well, how do you how do you know what you're going to end up with when you're doing this? And, and the answer is I really don't. I have an idea that I would like to try to do, uh, but depending on what the wood presents me, I might not be able mm -hmm. to do that. The wood doesn't care what I want. Uh, I have to work with what the wood presents. So I have to be prepared to modify based on possibly a flaw in the wood, or there's a, a mm. crack or a void or a, a nail from an old tree house or something. Um, or if the wood presents some really fantastic figure, maybe I need to modify my design, you know, that originally, I think I was planning on painting this one doing that that metallic technique. I think that was oh, no. my original plan. Uh, it would have been yeah. horrifying to cover all of that up. Mm -hmm. If that's the direction that I would have gone, you know, so uh, I have to be, I have to be fluid in my process. Um, but way more is dictated by the wood itself than what I want to try to force it to be, because I, I can't, I can't force it to my will. Yeah. I have to be, mm -hmm. I have to be flexible. 
Well, Jeff, I am just now, now you got my curiosity peaked. And I know that the folks watching probably would love to see a little bit of woodworking or would I, mean, should, I shouldn't say woodworking, wood turning. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You're gonna get you're gonna get me straight on this. So um That's would you right. mind showing us a little bit of the technique? No, I've got a, I've got a piece set up that I'm working on. Um, I've got it on the lathe. Let's back the camera out just a little bit. Uh, this is this is a maple plank. Uh, I'm in the process of turning it into a bowl, and um, it's so it's on my lathe. And, and like I said, the job of the lathe is simply to spin this piece of wood round and round in a counterclockwise manner. All right, and then my job as the turner is to take something like this tool, this bowl gouge, this gouge, and cut and shape and smooth the piece of wood until it is uh, in, in, hopefully, in the final form that I want it to be. And it's a very, it's a very simple process. It's technical, uh, but it's also very um, relaxing. And all I'm doing is removing material. You know, if this is something that I want to have a rim on, maybe I'll maybe I'll leave that. Or if I want to have an interesting curve on this size, maybe I'll work on that. You know, and that's uh, that's wow. uh, that's kind of what we do. And so it's just a, a series. It's just a series of cuts and body movements it's a very dirty it's a very dirty <laughs> pastime. um but that's that's part of the fun uh it's yeah. it, it's a mess but you gotta love it and uh but uh, there's no there's really no limit to what i can do with just a piece of wood you know and that's uh, for me that's a that's huge amazing. a huge allure to this this as, as not only as a hobby but as a, as a career that there's there's just no limit to what i can do well, Jeff, I know why that the, that the the college is using you as an educator because I have learned so much in just a few minutes here about a whole area of life that that I've only known that you do, but I don't really understand it. But I think yeah. I kind of have a clue, and I need to. I think I need to book a plane flight back to come see you guys. And uh, <laughs> yeah, if you if you come back if you come back to St. Louis, you're welcome in my shop anytime. Um, I've got three full size machines set up all the time because Jeez. when we get back, when we get away from the distancing and things start to ease up a little bit, I'll have students in here. Um, but there's a lot of resources in your area as well. So there, there's, there's turners everywhere, way more than you ever thought <laughs> possible. They're all over the, we're all over the place. Wow. Yeah. It, it really is. It's cool. And, and the more I think about, you know, what we see in houses and how things are constructed and the things that we buy, you know, yeah. um, you know, like, it's simple as a, a leg on a chair or the desk or something like that. It possibly could have been turd yeah. Yeah, or a pen because yeah. you have done some beautiful pens. I, I don't have, I don't have a turn one handy. I think there's one over there, but I don't want to try to get over there right now. Um, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, just a, a simple, a simple pen and, uh, and an yeah. hour of your time during a class. But the, the, the satisfaction of being able to say, look, I, I made a thing. I, I made this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whether you show anybody else or you just, you just take that and, 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 and uh, hold on to that personal pride on the inside, you can make a thing. You don't have to spend days and weeks and months for a finished project. Um, the demo piece that I was working on, you know, it's a, uh, I was, I was live for about an hour and a half. Realistically, there's about 30 to 40 minutes worth of work. Now I've got some experience, so I, I move a lot faster than right. other turners. Some other turners are faster than me, but uh, I've, practice mm -hmm. helps. But you're talking an hour, hour or three, and you can have a finished vessel that you can take inside and, and put your, your dinner salad in or present uh, as a gift or something. And it's something that you made. And, and that, that personal pride is just, there, nothing beats it. Nothing, nothing beats well, it. I think, and I think, yeah, I, I know, I know a different, 
hobbies I've had, you know, like even being in music, being able to, to make a production and say, you know, Hey, I made this music and it was fabulous or right. even flipping the house, you know, the finished product of that was amazing to have that sense of satisfaction of completion. But I also think our world's kind of going to a little bit more simple lifestyle. I think that, you know, yeah. the one ben benefit of the whole COVID-19 and all that, that I think as individuals in the world that we've had a moment to really kind of reassess, you know, mm -hmm. what's really important and what's not. And I think a lot of this fluff that we're finding that, you know, well, it's easier. We can make some of these things ourselves and there's much more satisfaction of doing that. Um, yeah, I, I think I, a I lot really, of things I think are shifting. Yeah. I, and I really hope you're right. Um, I would love for that shift to happen. Um, that things, things have been so complicated and coming from somebody that, lived in a complicated world and had a complicated life. You know, you get up and you go to work and you work and you come home, mm -hmm. you're trying to do all of this and the bills and the pays and the what, and, da, 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 da. Yeah. and there was no time for me that at the end of the day, I'd flop in the chair and I'd put my feet up and I'd watch TV, um, which, which is fine for escapism, but it's not overly productive. It's not as good for me as making a thing, you know, it's like, I, I made this. Yeah me. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, I've got a lot of equipment, but I got a lot of years invested. You don't have to mm -hmm. have anywhere near as much as I do to do this. <laughs> and, and like we were talking about, if you're, if you have an area where there's some resources, you might not need to invest in anything at the beginning, you know, that it's, it's available and yeah. you can try it out. Well, Jeff, I thank you so much for coming on tonight and kind of getting us up to speed and, and showing us some new, new skills here. I think that people can use and, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that everybody's got your contact information at the end of the show. Please um, do. So they can reach out. And, uh, you know, hopefully we're going to have some more wood turners out there, the next generation, right? <laughs> yeah. If, if any of your viewers or listeners have questions, reach out. I'm, I'm an instructor. This is what I do. I get people involved. And uh, the, the, best, the best feeling that I get is when I can show somebody what I'm absolutely passionate about. And that's, that's wood turning. So uh, always happy, always mm -hmm. happy to help. Always happy to talk turning. Absolutely. Well, you can definitely tell the passions there. Thanks again, Jeff. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here on the village voice. And next time uh, we will have uh, some more interesting topics coming up. Like for instance, some of you small business folks are trying to adjust to the new pandemic world. How in the world are we keeping in touch with our clientele and how we, uh, you know, staying ahead of the, of the curve here? So tune in. I'll be back on Friday at seven o'clock right here. Thanks again for joining me here on The Village Voice.